Some Amazing Secrets of Mona Lisa Revealed Mona Lisa, also called Portrait of Lisa Gerardini, wife of Francesco del Giocondo, Italian La Gioconda, or French La Gioconde, oil painting on a poplar wood panel by Leonardo da Vinci, probably the world's most famous painting. It was painted sometime between 1503 and 1519, when Leonardo was living in Florence, and it now hangs in the Louvre Museum, Paris, where it remained an object of pilgrimage in the 21st century. The sitter's mysterious smile and her unproven identity have made the painting a source of ongoing investigation and fascination. New images uncover 25 secrets about the Mona Lisa, including proof that Leonardo da Vinci gave her eyebrows, solving a long-held mystery. The images are part of an exhibition, Mona Lisa Secrets Revealed, which features new research by French engineer Pascal Cotte and debuts in the United States at the Metrian Center in San Francisco, where it will remain through the end of this year. Mona Lisa Showcase is part of a larger exhibition called Da Vinci, an exhibition of genius. Experts scanned the painting with a 240-megapixel multispectral imaging camera he invented, which uses 13 wavelengths from ultraviolet light to infrared. The resulting images peel away centuries of varnish and other alterations, shedding light on how the artist brought the painted figure to life and how she appeared to Da Vinci and his contemporaries. The face of Mona Lisa appears slightly wider and the smile is different and the eyes are different. Mona Lisa Mysteries A zoomed-in image of Mona Lisa's left eye revealed a single brush stroke in the eyebrow region. Another conundrum had been the position of the subject's right arm, which lies across her stomach. This was the first time, Cott said, that a painter had rendered a subject's arm and wrist in such a position. While other artists had never understood da Vinci's reasoning, they copied it nonetheless. Photos, Anatomy Meets Art in Da Vinci's Drawings Cott discovered the pigment just behind the right wrist matched up perfectly with that of the painted cover that drapes across Mona Lisa's knee. So it did make sense, the forearm and wrist held up one side of a blanket. The wrist of the right hand is up high on the stomach. But if you look deeply in the infrared, you understand that she holds a cover with her wrist. Behind a painting. The infrared images also revealed da Vinci's preparatory drawings that lie behind layers of varnish and paint, showing that the Renaissance man was also human. Other revelations include. Lace on Mona Lisa's dress. The transparency of the veil shows da Vinci first painted a landscape and then used transparency techniques to paint the veil atop it. A change in the position of the left index and middle finger. The elbow was repaired from damage due to a rock thrown at the painting in 1956. The blanket covering Mona Lisa's knees also covers her stomach. The left finger was not completely finished. A blotch mark on the corner of the eye and chin are varnish accidents, countering claims that Mona Lisa was sick. And the Mona Lisa was painted on uncut poplar board, contrary to speculations. In the larger picture, Cott said when he stands back and looks up at the enlarged infrared image of Mona Lisa, her beauty and mystique are apparent. If you are in front of this huge enlargement of Mona Lisa, you understand instantly why Mona Lisa is so famous. This painting is painted as oil on wood. The original painting size is 77 by 53 centimeters, 30 by 27 eighths in, and is owned by the government of France and is on the wall in the Louvre in Paris, France. This figure of a woman, dressed in the Florentine fashion of her day and seated in a visionary, mountainous landscape, is a remarkable instance of Leonardo's sfumato technique of soft, heavily shaded modeling. The Mona Lisa's enigmatic expression, which seems both alluring and aloof, has given the portrait universal fame. The Mona Lisa's famous smile represents the sitter in the same way that the juniper branches represent Ginevra Bensi and the ermine represents Cecilia Gallerani in their portraits, in Washington and Krakow respectively. It is a visual representation of the idea of happiness suggested by the word Gioconda in Italian. 
Leonardo made this notion of happiness the central motif of the portrait, it is this notion that makes the work such an ideal. The nature of the landscape also plays a role. The middle distance, on the same level as the sitter's chest, is in warm colors. Men live in this space, there are a winding road and a bridge. This space represents the transition between the space of the sitter and the far distance, where the landscape becomes a wild and uninhabited space of rocks and water which stretches to the horizon, which Leonardo has cleverly drawn at the level of the sitter's eyes. The painting was among the first portraits to depict the sitter before an imaginary landscape and Leonardo was one of the first painters to use aerial perspective. The enigmatic woman is portrayed seated in what appears to be an open loggia with dark pillar bases on either side. Behind her, a vast landscape recedes to icy mountains. Winding paths and a distant bridge give only the slightest indications of human presence. The sensuous curves of the woman's hair and clothing, created through sfumato, are echoed in the undulating imaginary valleys and rivers behind her. The blurred outlines, graceful figure, dramatic contrasts of light and dark, and overall feeling of calm are characteristic of da Vinci's style. Due to the expressive synthesis that da Vinci achieved between sitter and landscape, it is arguable whether Mona Lisa should be considered as a traditional portrait, for it represents an ideal rather than a real woman. The sense of overall harmony achieved in the painting especially apparent in the sitter's faint smile reflects the idea of a link connecting humanity and nature. In the Renaissance which brought together all human activities, art meant science, art meant truth to life, Leonardo da Vinci was a great figure because he embodied the epic endeavor of Italian art to conquer universal values. He who combined within himself the fluctuating sensitivity of the artist and the deep wisdom of the scientist, he, the poet and the master. In his Mona Lisa, the individual, a sort of miraculous creation of nature, represents at the same time the species, the portrait goes beyond its social limitations and acquires a universal meaning. Although Leonardo worked on this picture as a scholar and thinker, not only as a painter and poet, the scientific and philosophical aspects of his research inspired no following. But the formal aspect, the new presentation, the nobler attitude, and the increased dignity of the model had a decisive influence over Florentine portraits of the next 20 years, over the classical portrait. With his Mona Lisa, Leonardo created a new formula, at the same time more monumental and more lively, more concrete and yet more poetic than that of his predecessors. Before him, portraits had lacked mystery, artists only represented outward appearances without any soul, or, if they showed the soul, they tried to express it through gestures, symbolic objects, or inscriptions. The Mona Lisa alone is a living enigma, the soul is there, but inaccessible. 10 Facts You Might Not Know About The Masterpiece 1. She lived with Francois I, Louis XIV and Napoleon. Although da Vinci began work on his masterpiece while living in his native Italy, he did not finish it until he moved to France at King Francois I's request. The French king displayed the painting in his Fontainebleau palace where it remained for a century. Louis XIV removed it to the Grand Palace of Versailles. At the outset of the 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte kept the painting in his boudoir. Some historians believe Mona Lisa is a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci died in 1519, and he is buried at a French castle. Italy's National Committee for Cultural Heritage is undertaking an investigation, and plans to dig up his skull. They want to rebuild Leonardo's face, using CSI-style technology. Will he resemble the mysterious Mona Lisa? She has her own room in the Louvre Museum in Paris. After the Louvre launched a four-year, $6.3 million renovation in 2003, the painting now has its own room. A glass ceiling lets in natural light, a shatterproof glass display case maintains a controlled temperature of 43 degrees Fahrenheit, and a little spotlight brings out the true colors of da Vinci's original paints. It is a painting, but not a canvas. Da Vinci's famous masterpiece is painted on a poplar plank. Considering he was accustomed to painting larger works on wet plaster, a wood plank does not seem that outlandish. 
Canvas was available to artists since the 14th century, but many Renaissance masters preferred wood as a basis for their small artworks. Jackie Kennedy invited her to visit. Over the centuries, French officials have only rarely let the painting out of their sight. However, when First Lady Jackie Kennedy asked if the painting could visit the U.S., French President de Gaulle agreed. Mona Lisa went on display at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and then at the Metropolitan Museum of the Arts in New York City. A thief made her famous. Although in the art world, the painting had always been an acknowledged masterpiece, it wasn't until it was stolen in the summer of 1911 that it would capture the attention of the general public. Newspapers spread the story of the crime worldwide. When the painting finally returned to the Louvre two years later, practically the whole world was cheering. 7. Picasso was under suspicion for the theft. During the investigation, the gendarmes went so far as to question known art dissidents such as Pablo Picasso about the theft. They briefly arrested poet Guillaume Apollinaire, who had once said the painting should be burned. Their suspicions proved to be unfounded. 8. She receives fan mail. Since the painting first arrived at the Louvre in 1815, Mona Lisa has received plenty of love letters and flowers from admirers. She even has her own mailbox. 9. Not everyone is a fan. Various vandals have tried to harm da Vinci's famed masterpiece, and 1956 was a particularly bad year. In two separate attacks, one person threw acid at the painting, and another individual pelted it with a rock. The damage is faint but still noticeable. The addition of bulletproof glass repelled subsequent attacks with spray paint in 1974 and a coffee cup in 2009. 10. She cannot be bought or sold. Truly priceless, the painting cannot be bought or sold according to French heritage law. As part of the Louvre collection, Mona Lisa belongs to the public, and by popular agreement, their hearts belong to her.